Alright, so in today's video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be rewriting the NHL script, and what do I mean by that? Well, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make moves, any moves I wanna make in the entire league. I can put new faces in new places, I can strip captaincy, I can remove rules from the league, I can form super teams, I can make teams very bad or very good, I can literally do whatever I want to the NHL. Once I make all the changes that I wanna do, then we're gonna head into franchise mode for five full seasons, we're gonna simulate and see what happens. And we're going to find out how my NHL script will pan out over the next five years. So without further ado, let's go straight ahead and start making changes to the NHL. All right, so first off, Canadian teams have not done very good in the last 30 years. We have not won a single Stanley Cup. Also, my team is the Edmonton Oilers. You already know I have to go ahead and stack them. I'm going to go ahead and trade Igor Shesterkin for Jack Campbell. One for one, the most fair trade in NHL history. Actually, Jack Campbell is down in the AHL, so it's going to be Calvin Picker for Igor Shosturkin, but we are not done yet. The Edmonton Oilers also need an elite defenseman, so we are going to be adding Roman Yossi to the team and also none other than Mo Sider of the Detroit Red Wings, so we have two great defenders on the team now. Moving along to the Toronto Maple Leafs, they are also going to need help. I want to see a Canadian team win a Stanley Cup here. It's been far too long, at least in real life, since we last seen a Canadian team win the Cup, which I believe was Montreal back in 93. So we already know the woes of the Toronto Toronto Maple Leafs is goaltending. They need a goalie desperately. So Nashville, you're going to be giving up UC Soros, an 89 overall goaltender. And you know what? Screw it. I'm also going to be adding Ryan O'Reilly and Ryan McDonough to the team. Now for the next team, it's going to be the Pittsburgh Penguins. And what we're going to do is we are going to create the greatest dynamic duo of all time between Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin. They're both old. I know like 38 and 36 years old, 93 and 91 overall, but Ovi Sims amazing in this game and Crosby Sims pretty well too. So now we're on the Chicago Blackhawks and they definitely did not deserve Connor Bedard after what they tried to hide in their organization with Kyle Beach. They didn't deserve the first overall pick so instead we're going to be returning Connor Bedard to his hometown team the Vancouver Canucks who are already doing amazing in real life but now they're going to be adding an 18 year old phenom to the roster. Now Colorado being the greatest team of all time is a fact at this point but Gabriel Landeskog is not going to play in real life so I'm going to trade him in the game here and he's going to be heading to the Boston Bruins. We're going to make Make them even better boys but we know that Calgary is not very good so I'm gonna add Elias Lindholm and Mackenzie Wieger to the team make the Dallas Stars even better Lindell and Ryan Suter for Lindholm and Mackenzie Wieger you know what screw it Matthew Kachuk being in Florida is not good enough instead I'm gonna put him on the Ottawa Senators he's gonna play alongside his brother and Brady Kachuk and Timmy Stu down the middle you know what let's make the Sens absolutely stack give them Alexander Barkov Aaron Ekblad, and also Sam Reinhardt. Screw Florida. Nobody even cares about hockey in Florida anyway, so this is not going to make much of a difference to the fans, at least. You know what? The LA Kings need a star player that's going to be very marketable in the state of California, and that is going to be Austin Matthews, who is going to be leaving the Toronto Maple Leafs, but don't worry, Leafs fans. I am going to be replacing Austin Matthews with none other than Adam Fox and Artemi Panarin of the New York Rangers. Now for the New Jersey Devils, they are going to complete the huge Hughes trio as Quinn Hughes is now a New Jersey Devil. Vancouver did lose their captain, but they got Connor Bedard in the process, so they should be fine. For the Philadelphia Flyers, I'm going to remove Carter Hart from the roster and give it to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Pittsburgh needs a better goalie, and Tristan Jari is pretty shaky, so we're going to trade one for one there. Now for San Jose, I really do want to make them the worst team in NHL history in my script. So basically, every single good player on this team, which there's not a lot, but they're all going to get traded here. Logan Couture, where do I want to trade him. Honestly, let's go to the Buffalo Sabres. He can play alongside Tage Thompson and Jeff Skinner. Ferraro, Barbaranov, and Duclair are also all going to get traded as they are going to be going to the Detroit Red Wings. Honestly, to the Montreal Canadiens, give them a, another better goalie probably. San Jose is going to need a couple players back, so we're going to give them Pozzetta and, you know what, screw it. I'll give them these guys. Now, of course, nobody outside of St. Louis really cares about the Blues, so we're going to give up Robert Thomas and Buchnevich. Also, Jordan Cairo and Jordan Bennington in a four-way deal. Where are they going to go here? I'm going to send four of the St. Louis Blues players 
to the Winnipeg Jets in exchange for four of the worst players on the Winnipeg Jets. Basically, all the Canadian teams are going to be the best teams in the NHL. Arizona, you guys have suffered long enough. I'm going to get you a star player. Hold up. We're going to give you Sebastian Ajo from the Carolina Hurricanes, as well as Freddie Anderson and Jacob Slavin. Now, Columbus definitely deserves an elite player. They do have one in Adam Fantilli. Eventually, I believe he's going to be very good. But for the meantime, we're going to have to give them a great player. Who do we want to go in and trade for? here. You know what? Minnesota, Kirill Kaprizov of the Minnesota Wild. You are now headed to the Columbus Blue Jackets. All right. Honestly, I think I might be done. I've made all the moves that I want to make in my NHL script here. So we are just going to go ahead and we are going to simulate five full seasons and see who goes on and wins the Stanley Cup year after year. Now for captaincy across the NHL, obviously Austin Matthews has to have it in LA because he is the best player. I mean, Anze Kobitar, you have been a captain for a very long Long time but is now the Matthews era in LA. Now for the New Jersey Devils instead Jack Hughes is going to get the C the A is going to go to Quinn Hughes and also Luke Hughes instead of Dougie Hamilton. It is the Hughes era in New Jersey and honestly the same is going to go for the Kachuk brothers in Ottawa and you know what since the Vancouver Canucks have lost their captain over the changes that I've made I'm going to reward them now JT Miller, sorry, you do not deserve an A, but the captain C now. Okay, for some reason, Thatcher Demko is going to have the C on the Vancouver Canucks, and I cannot change it. This has got to be a glitch. I've never seen this in my life. I traded Quinn Hughes, or actually just removed Quinn Hughes from Vancouver in roster moves, and it gave the captain C to Thatcher Demko, the goaltender. I, I literally can't change it. I was going to give Connor Bedard the C, but instead, you know what? I'm just going to ride with it. I'm cool. So I just hopped into edit player, and it doesn't look like there's a C on Demko's jersey. Now, that could be a glitch because sometimes the captaincy really doesn't show up. And unfortunately, it does not look like Thatcher Demko is going to be wearing the C in game. I guess they're just going to roll with no captain. I was honestly so hyped to see a goalie wear the C, but I guess we couldn't glitch the game. So heading into the season mode, here are the overalls of every single NHL team. One that stands out to me is honestly the Winnipeg Jets at a 94 overall. Nobody is even really close to Winnipeg outside of the Ottawa Senators, 93 overall. So there's going to be a couple things that I do to the rules here. The first thing is the trapezoid rule. I'm going to turn that off. Injuries on. Penalties are two out of four. No trapezoid rule. Post whistle rules. Uh, honestly, I'm going to put it as anything goes. So if they want to get rough after the whistles, they can do that. Now, before we head into the simulation, if you guys do enjoy videos like this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content, more NHL content, literally just like this. Also, make sure you turn on the notifications so you don't miss a single live stream or video that I put out. And of course, don't mind Roman Yossi and his gorgeous hair in the background. So at the end of year number one, the Dallas Stars are going to finish as the best team in the NHL, winning 55 games, followed by the Vancouver Canucks. Colorado was up there. Toronto actually did very good. Ottawa, Pittsburgh, Carolina, New Jersey. At the bottom, we have the San Jose Sharks who lost 52 games. Surprisingly, they actually won 27. I did not expect that. Minnesota was down there. St. Louis, Florida, Nashville. Elias Pedersen is going to go ahead and lead the entire NHL in scoring with 100. 119 points, followed by Pasternak's 113, McDavid had 108, Kudrov 107, Marshawn 107, Mitch Marner was up there, Dreisaitl, Braden Point, and Artemi Panarin. And for goals in the NHL, Matthews is going to lead on the LA Kings with 59, followed by Kudrov's 55, Pasta had 51, Bedard was up there as a 19-year-old, actually 18-year-old. Leon Dreisaitl had a good season as well as Vladimir Tarasenko scoring 41 goals. Now for defensemen, Heiskanen and Carlson are going to lead with 96 points apiece, followed by Kale McCarthy. 95. Noah Dobson was up there. Dalene, Yossi, Montour. Goalies, Jake Ottinger is going to lead in wins with 42. Cam Talbot had 40 and Schmidt 40. Now for shutouts in the NHL, Georgiev is going to tie with Hellebuck at 6 apiece. Demko had 5, Hill 4. And in year number 1, these are our playoff matchups. And in the Stanley Cup final, we have the Colorado Avalanche versus the Boston Bruins. Two teams that honestly, before all the moves that I made in the NHL, would probably still make the finals. But let's go ahead and see who's going to take home the Stanley Cup in year number one. And in year number one, the Boston Bruins are going to go all the way and basically avenge what they did last season in real life after losing and choking a 3-1 lead to the Florida Panthers. One year later with a bunch of changes in the NHL and they are going to go all the way winning the Stanley Cup as a 
they beat Colorado in six games. David Pasternak is going to go ahead and win the Conn Smythe. 20 goals and 45 points in the postseason. That is insane. That's probably the best playoff run in NHL history considering the competition in Nail Days NHL or in the current day NHL, I should say. And there it is, the Stanley Cup finally being raised in Boston for the first time since 2011. I mean, it didn't get raised in Boston, but they did end up winning it and here comes their captain the rat brad marchand coming to lift the stanley cup for the second time in his nhl career he's made four stanley cup finals now and he has two stanley cups to his name as boston wins the stanley cup in year number one now for the playoffs, obviously Pasta had 20 goals and 45 points. That is insane. Landis Cog had 36, only 8 goals. Arshan had 27. JVR was up there with 20. McAvoy, 15. Elias Pettersson is going to take home the Ted Lindsay and the Hart Trophy. Also the Art Ross. The Maurice Richard is going to go to Matthews. The Norris to Eric Carlson. Lady Bing the Pasta and the Conn Smythe as well. The Vesna to Alexander Georgiev. And the Selkie is going to go to Nathan McKinnon. At the end of year number 2, yet again, Dallas is going to finish as the best team in the NHL this time winning 52 games followed by the winnipeg jets new jersey was up there toronto vancouver pittsburgh and the islanders at the bottom we have the san jose sharks yet again montreal philly and the rangers were also all down there as well matthews is going to lead all skaters in points with 116 followed by mcdavid's 113 jt miller had 110 pasta was up there marner and brad marchand for the goal side david pasternak is going to lead with 55 matthews 51 ov had 50 mckinnon 47 and jt miller 46 for defense Defenseman Eric Carlson is going to lead with 93 points. It was not even remotely close, honestly. And for goalies, Connor Hellebuck is going to tie for wins with Jake Ottinger. And for the shutouts, it's going to be Freddie Anderson on the Arizona Coyotes. Finally, Arizona has a goaltender. Their first half-decent goaltender since, like, Mike Smith in 2012. And here we go yet again. This is our year number two NHL playoffs, or Stanley Cup playoffs, I should say. And in the Stanley Cup finals, we have the Vancouver Canucks up against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Jackets? I gotta be honest, I did not see Columbus making the Stanley Cup final in this video. But let's go ahead and find out who is taking home the Stanley Cup in year number two, Vancouver or Columbus. And the Vancouver Canucks have done it. They have become the very first Canadian team in over 30 years to go on and win a Stanley Cup as they finally break the curse. They would end up defeating the Columbus Blue Jackets in game seven of the Stanley Cup finals. A back and forth series. It was very close, honestly. Could have gone either Either way, the Conn Smythe is going to go to Elias Pettersson. Five goals and 27 points. Not the postseason that Pasta had last year, but a very good one nonetheless. And not only that, but Connor Bedard on his hometown team in basically his second season in the NHL is going to win a Stanley Cup. And there it is. Rewriting the wrong. That was 2011. And there he is, the 18-year-old Connor Bedard coming to lift the Stanley Cup for his hometown team, Vancouver Canucks, as there's not going to be a riot this year as Vancouver has gone all the way winning it all For the playoffs, Elias Pettersson is going to lead in scoring with 27 points. Kuzmenko had 21. Bedard had 10 goals and 20 points as an 18-year-old. Connor McDavid is going to take home the Ted Lindsay and the Hart Trophy. The Art Ross is going to go to Matthews and Maurice Richard to David Pasternak. The Norris to Eric Carlson. The Lady Bing to McDavo. The Conn Smythe, obviously, to Pedersen. The Vesna to Freddie Anderson. And the Selkie is going to go yet again to Nathan McKinnon. At the end of year three, Colorado is going to finish as the best team, winning 54 games, followed by Boston. Edmonton was up there for the first time in the video. Dallas, Detroit, Toronto had a good season. Ottawa at the bottom. We have yet again San Jose, Arizona, Nashville, Calgary, Philly. You get the point. The bottom of the NHL really is not going to change. Connor McDavid is going to lead the NHL in scoring with 114 points, followed by Bredman's 108. Matthews had 107. Pedersen was up there. Marner, 104. Marshawn and Kyle Connor on the goal side. Connor is going to lead with 53, followed by Rantanen's 50. Matthews also had 50. Ovechkin, a big season from him and McDavo had 48 as well. Offensively, Kale McCarr is going to lead by 1.82 over Noah Dobson's 81 points. I've never seen Dobson put up this many points. So that is definitely surprising. Now for goalies, Vili Husso and Shesterkin are going to tie in wins with 42. And for the shutouts in the NHL, Linus Allmark is going to lead with 8. That is crazy. And here is our year 3 playoff matchups. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, we have a very exciting matchup between the Edmonton Oilers and the Tampa Bay 
Lightning. Finally, McDavid reaches the Stanley Cup Finals, but does he have enough to bring it home for the Edmonton Oilers? Let's find out. Also, did anybody see the GTA 6 trailer get released yesterday, I believe? Somebody leaked it on Twitter, and then Rockstar released it themselves. Oh my god, I am so excited for that game. It's still pretty far away, though, with the 2025 release date. And the Tampa Bay Lightning are gonna go on and win another Stanley Cup, this time without their captain in Steven Stamkos. But they would end up dominating Edmonton in five games in the Stanley Cup Finals. It was really not even that close. McDavid played well, but it was not well enough to beat the Tampa Bay Lightning as they win their third Stanley Cup in the Kucherov era. Kucherov, Vassy, and Hedman era, I should say. As the Conn Smythe is going to go to Nikita Kucherov. 13 goals and 32 points. A very good postseason by him. There it is. The Stanley Cup being presented in Rogers place, but instead for the away team. As unfortunately for Oilers fans, they're going to have to wait. Actually, I didn't remove Steven Stamkos. He stayed on the team. My memory is absolutely losing it right now, but there he is. Stammer lifting the Stanley Cup for another time in his career as Tampa Bay has gone all the way in year number three. For the playoffs, Leon Dreisaitl is going to lead in scoring with 37 points, followed by Kucherov's 32, McDavid at 32, and Braden Point 27. McDavid is going to take home the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. Maurice Richard is going to go to Kyle Connor, the Norris to Kale McCarr, the Khan Smythe, obviously to Kucherov. Vezna to Linus Allmark, and the Selkie is going to go to McDavo. So the absolutely stacked roster that is Winnipeg finally performs in the regular season as they are the best team. Winning 55 games, followed by the Oilers. Ottawa was up there Dallas Pittsburgh and Toronto Crosby and McDavid are going to tie for the most points at 108 Kyle Connor had 106 Pedersen was up there Shifley Marchand and Jordan Eberle had 42 goals and 101 points that is crazy 33 years old speaking of goals an 18 year old Connor Bedard is going to tie Kyle Connor with 51 goals apiece I mean he had less games though as he's going to lead the NHL in goal scoring followed by McKinnon's 50 DeBrinket was up there Kucherov Pasta and Nikolai Ehlers defensively Eric Carlson is going to lead with 83 points for goalies. Corbisalo is going to have the most wins at 43. And for shutouts, it's going to be Ilya Sorokin with a three-way tie, I believe. With Ottinger, Huso, Sorokin all had four shutouts apiece. And here we go. This is our year number four playoff matchups. And in the Stanley Cup final, we have a matchup between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Ottawa Senators. Let's go ahead and see who is going to take it home here in year number four. And the Ottawa Senators are going to become the second Canadian team in this video to go on and win the Stanley Cup as they defeat the Vegas Golden Knights in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. They finally get it done. They get their very first Stanley Cup in their franchise's history. Kind of technically, I don't know, the old Ottawa Senators did win Stanley Cups, but the new ones didn't. I don't know. It's kind of confusing, honestly. The Conn Smythe is going to go to Tim Stutzla. 9 goals and 27 points. A very good playoff run. And there it is. The Stanley Cup being raised in, I believe, Canadian entire center. Here comes our captain Brady Kachuk. Gonna win his very first Stanley Cup with his brother Matthew as he lifts it for the Ottawa Senators here in year number four. For the playoffs, Tim Stutzla is going to lead with 27 points, followed by Matthew Kachuk's 25, Kaprizov at 24, Barkov 24, Kyle Connor is going to take home the Ted Lindsay and the Maurice Richard, the Art Ross is going to go to Connor McDavid and the Hart Trophy also to Kyle Connor, the Norris to Josh Morrissey, obviously the Conn Smythe is going to go to Tim Stutzla, the Vesna to Ilya Sorokin and the Selkie will go to Nico Heischer. Now at the end of the final season of the video, Tampa Bay is going to finish first in the entire NHL, 56 wins, win Winnipeg was up there, Pittsburgh, LA, New Jersey, Arizona had a very good year, 47 wins. Austin Matthews is going to go absolutely insane, leading in goals with 63 and points with 126. Like Crosby's 114, Kucherov was up there, Brandon Point, Nathan McKinnon, and Adrian Kempe had 100 points. I would definitely not have expected that. Now on the goal side, other than Matthews, Rantanen had 58, Ovechkin 52, Kucherov 51, Kyle Connor 49, Max Pacioretty had 42. For the 
defenseman yet again Eric Carlson is going to lead in scoring this time 92 points a very good season for goalies Vassy is going to lead in wins with 46 and for shutouts in the NHL it's going to go to Jonathan Quick tying Nedeljkovic at four hey yo Jonathan Quick in real life is actually playing insane for his age on the New York Rangers as the backup and in the Stanley Cup final we have a rematch of a couple seasons ago between Colorado and Tampa Bay Tampa Bay trying to get their second of the video Colorado still trying to get their very first of the video so let's see who's gonna go home with the Stanley Cup in year number five and just like in 2022 the Colorado Avalanche are gonna go on and defeat the Tampa Bay Lightning in six games in the Stanley Cup finals as they are gonna win their very first Stanley Cup of the video too bad Tampa Bay couldn't get two but Two Stanley Cup Finals is not bad either. A very hard-fought series by the Avalanche. As the Con Smythe is going to go to Miko Rantanen, 11 goals and 24 points. He now is the captain of Colorado since Gabriel Landeskog is now on, I believe, Boston, who actually won the Stanley Cup in year number one. And here comes their captain, Miko Rantanen, coming to lift the Stanley Cup for the first time in the video, but the second time in his NHL career as Colorado, yet again, are Stanley Cup champions. Austin Matthews is going to take home every single individual award. The Norris to Eric Carlson, the Con Smythe, of course, to Miko Ranton, and the Vesna is going to go to Vassi, and the Selkie will go to Connor McDavid. And that is going to do it for this video, boys. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you could sauce me a follow on Twitch, that would be greatly appreciated. Get it? Sauce me a follow because you sauce the puck in a hockey game? Why are my jokes so bad? Anyways, there you go. I wrote the NHL script for five straight seasons. We had mixed results nobody went back to back so it wasn't that uncompetitive and i think it was very exciting as well let me know in the comments how good of a job i did on it thank you all for watching and until next time don't be silly wrap your willy the link for my twitch my tiktok and my twitter is also in the descriptions of every single video i post